guard, like Ban, has evolved from military traditions. The soldiers you see on the field at football games are the military color guard, with the color meaning the flags that they carry. But America wasn't the only place using flags. In Switzerland, the art of flag twirling was an Olympic sport. Franz Hug from Lucerne was made famous by flag twirling. He brought the Swedish tradition to America around 1937. Leonard Hogg, a band director at the University of Wisconsin, was fond of the idea and created a flag for each university in the Big Ten Conference at that time. He then spread guard to the Southwest by creating the Big Six Conference. Hogg was so mesmerized by flag twirling, he invented the twirl flag baton, a combination of swing flag and baton that was used by some guards, but never really gained widespread popularity. As different schools wanted different sized flags, Band directors' wives would hand sew them, as the demand for flags was just beginning, and these products were not yet manufactured. In the excitement of guards being established, of course there were some who weren't excited and questioned the value of color guard, a problem that we still see today. The University of Wisconsin, where Hogg started his first guard, doesn't have a guard program anymore. It was difficult to find specific history on winter guard, but intuitively it stems from outdoor guard and now exists in the US, Canada, Belgium, Holland, Germany, England, Ireland, Korea, Japan, and Africa. DCI was founded in 1972, thus guard was operating under their regulations, which varied by region. WGI's website recalls the unsatisfactory performance venues, such as a basement. They were fed up with that, so in 1977, Don Angelica, Shirley Whitcomb, Stanley Knob, Brian Johnston, Marie Sapinski, and Linda Chambers held a meeting in San Francisco. Quote, the mission at that first meeting was clear. All parts of the country would be equally represented in the development and maintenance of the activity. Color guards would govern their own activity. Shows would take place within their season, winter. Rules and regulations would be uniform, and there would be a championship contest. Lynn Lindstrom left her position as leader of the Midwest Color Guard Circuit to head the newly formed WGI, as she had experience in guard most of her life. Lynn retired in 2001, which is one of her many accomplishments, being the expansion of WGI to include percussion ensemble. She died in 2016 at the age of 76. As it grew, WGI gained more classes and many other things evolved. Rifles used to be heavier than 5 pounds, and the sabers were genuine from Spain or Germany. The competitions were graded based on the American Legion Competitive Flag Code and Field Manual 22-5, which mandated that all guards fly an American flag. As they shifted into more creative performances, these guidelines and other militaristic traditions faded out, and the activity became more of an artistic performance. WGI has come a long way from when it first started, and its story is certainly not over yet. Thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, or share with a friend.